Hi everyone, my name is Savannah and I'm an aquarist here at Oregon Coast Aquarium. I take care of the coastal waters room, which includes our Indo-Pacific tank, which is what we're gonna be talking about today. Our tank was recently opened in summer of 2020. Um, it's about 54,000 gallons. And uh, what's special about this tank is that it's a warm water tank. All of our other tanks in the aquarium are cold water unless they're in our traveling exhibit. Um, and so this one runs about 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Nice and toasty, it's lovely to dive in. <laughs> um, I'm very lucky that I have the warmest tank in the aquarium to dive. Um, you might look at this tank and think all this beautiful coral is amazing. Well, it is fake. Uh, if we wanted to have a tank this gorgeous with all this coral, immediately it would take about, you know, 200, 500 years. <laughs> we don't have that time. So uh, we actually had someone come and sculpt all of this coral for us. It's based on real coral, um, and that's why it looks so realistic. All, another reason why we can't have real coral in this tank is because, like I said, we do dive it every single week, um, and co real coral is extremely delicate, and it has um, very specific parameters that it needs. So if I were to get into this tank, bump into a coral, it would break off, and that would, you know, be unfortunately the end of that coral. So uh, we do have fake coral in here. And um, some of the species that I know a lot of people love are, is, um, are brain corals, which are the kids are always like, it's a brain. And they're correct. Um, one of the things you'll learn quickly for fish and corals is that they're not really creative when they're naming them. Uh, if you look at some of the flatter ones, they're called plate corals because they're flat like a plate. <laughs> so um, these are just some of the stuff that we have in here. And we do also use the same water that's in the aquarium, but we have to heat it up uh, to match everything. So like, the other tanks can just take it straight from the bay. We can't. <laughs> we have a really big heater in the back to keep it, everything warm. So if you look at some of the fish in here, these are all actually schooling fish, but they don't act like schooling fish because we don't really have any predators in this tank. So that's why they're all kind of spaced out a little bit. Our biggest school of fish that we have are going to be our yellow tangs. We have about 500 of them in this exhibit. When they came to us, they are about the size of a poker chip, and they've grown a lot since we got them. What's special about the animals in this tank is that they're all ethically sourced. And what that means is that we didn't get them from suppliers who went on to coral reefs and took them away. We actually got them from people who bred them in their facilities. So low impact on um, coral reefs is just a big problem that uh, we're seeing in um, reefs today. So if they weren't um, bred from those suppliers, they are also donated from people in the area. And we also actually pulled a lot of our animals from our sea punk exhibit and put them in here. So you might recognize some familiar faces if you look closely. For instance, our fox faced rabbit fish is this guy right in front with that black and white striping. Um, he came from Sea Punk. He is our only venomous animal in the tank. He has those venomous spines. So this tank looks really calm and peaceful, but it does have a little bit of danger. Um, on top of the rabbit fish, we also, a lot of the tank, uh, animals in this tank are tangs. They are part of the surgeon family. And that means that they have a scalpel blade-ish bone that protrudes at the base of their tail that they can flick out like a switchblade in defense. So when I dive in this tank, I have to make sure that I don't flail my arms around because I might get um, a little scrape if I do. And that um, is also who our regal blue tang is, or dory. Um, that's a lot of what the kids are yelling when they come up to this tank. They yell, dory! Um, they don't realize Dory can be dangerous, <laughs> so uh, she also has that blade on her. These beautiful orange fish right in front, these are Antheus. If you guys come visit this tank, look really closely. They have really pretty purple eyeliner that everyone is jealous of. I'm trying to find one of our star fish in here. He is a clown triggerfish. Uh, we have a couple triggers in here, but what's special about the clown triggers or triggers in general is that they have the ability to swim forwards and backwards really easily. Some fish struggle with this, but the trigger fish is shaped like a football, and it has these two strong dorsal 
and uh, ventral fins that let them go back and forth really easily. Um, and then the last kind of grouping of fish that we have in here that are pretty flashy are going to be our angelfish. Now angelfish are gorgeous, they get really big. And what's special about our angels in here is we have some that when they came to us, they were electric blue, black, and white striped. And uh, they turned into a dark blue with one single yellow stripe. Um, they go through this metamorphosis that's really interesting. All right, so now we're in the back of Indo-Pacific. This is where all the life support is for the exhibit. We have a nice big pump right here. And then one of probably the biggest UV sterilizers we have um, on our facility. The bulbs in this uh, UV sterilizer are six feet long. And we need all that power to keep everything really clean. Behind me, we have two heaters right here. I told you we need to heat the water up because the water that comes out of the bay is usually around 48 to 54 degrees, and we don't really need that in here. So we have a backup heater right here, and then we have the heater that's on right here. It's keeping it nice and toasty at 74 degrees. And behind me, you can see we have two sand filters. The sand filters are what we use to clean the water. Basically, the water has to go through those filters, get every particle out, and get nice and clean. On top of the exhibit, we have our two foam fractionators. These are called protein skimmers as well. This replicates ocean foam. Um, so basically what happens is that all these bubbles are injected into this chamber. The proteins and kind of gross gunkiness from the fish attach to those bubbles and they spill over and get into this basin where they're just dumped down the drain. So when you go play in ocean foam, just know it might be filled with fish poop. That's just how nature works. Um, in the back of me, I have bio towers. This is where we keep all of our good bacteria that helps us clean the tank. And you can kind of see I have four big lights over my exhibit. Um, that means that I need to scrub this tank a lot. So we do one scrub a week and it's an hour and a half dive, uh, which isn't that bad because the tank is so warm. So it's not bad to dive. <laughs> So unlike our cold water animals, which only maybe need to eat maybe three times a week or maybe a little bit more, our warm water fish need a lot more food. They're burning so much energy because the water's hot, they're moving a lot. Um, and these guys get fed three times a day. So their first morning feed, which I'm going to show you now, is a flake feed. And we're just going to take a big handful of flake, get it a little wet. And then you'll see all of my fish are already knowing what's up. Give it a little toss. And everyone comes up. Now there is a special group of fish in here that everyone loves, the clownfish. However, our particular clownfish are extremely shy. If you want to see them, you actually have to go outside to our outdoor window where they're hiding in a little corner. So I just fed all the big guys. I'm going to pour a little bit down here for them too, because I don't want them to miss out. One of the special feed items that they get three times a week is their greens. These guys, um, when they're out in nature on the reefs there, they're actually picking at algae all day. They help keep the reefs clean. Uh, we need to provide them a little bit uh, of that nutrition because we don't have a lot of that seagrass um, that they would have out in the wild. So to do that, we have a couple different options. Uh, we give them bok choy, which is a type of Chinese cabbage. They also get romaine lettuce and then a little bit of nori or seaweed. Um, this is the exact same stuff that you guys buy um, in the supermarket. I actually go to uh, JC Market every couple of weeks and get some bok choy for them. And I'm just going to toss this in here. And there they are enjoying their greens. Very important breakfast item of the day. And that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for coming along. I hope the next time you visit the aquarium, you take a nice, good look at our Indo-Pacific tank. All right. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to our latest edition of Deeper Dive, where we highlight an animal or some aspect of the aquarium that you wouldn't normally get to see on a regular visit. My name is Jeff, and I'm the education manager here at the aquarium. And today, it's my pleasure to be joined by one of our aquarists, Savannah. So 
So I have a co-diver um, who's another one of our aquarists named Paige, and she's the one who dives with me. Uh, she also takes care of the tank on my weekends right now. Um, we don't have any volunteers diving with us, so it's just aquarists who are diving um, and our tank right now, but maybe that'll change in the future. So for different fish families, like for the surgeon fish, it's a little bit easier because you, even though it um, is usually the same color as wherever it is blooded onto the tail, you can see that scalpel bone that protrudes from them. So it's kind of easy to tell um, tangs apart. And then if you think about like animals like a squirrel fish, um, they are usually nocturnal animals. So they have huge eyes. Um, and so it'd be kind of easier to tell, um, maybe a big eye, you would maybe be able to guess that it's a squirrel fish instead. Um, and then other animals like our angels, they always have huge, um, really intricate dorsal fins and usually also a really big anal fin too. And so you can just kind of um, start grouping those animals together when you notice those things like that. So they get, um, they get that green feed three times a week, like I said, and then they get flake in the morning. Um, for the midday feed, they get a mix of a whole bunch of meaty items. So I chop up krill, um, a different kind of krill that's a little bit smaller. They also get squid, clam, um, shrimp sometimes. And what's the... Uh, the last one. Sometimes if they're really good, they get my sister, but that's usually a really fatty food. And so that's a little special treat every now and then. And then for the afternoon feed, they get something called, we call it gel in the business. It's basically like a fish gummy vitamin that also has um, nutrition too. So um, they get just that chopped up into tiny little pieces. And they also sometimes will get pellets as well. I do think um, the Arabian angel, which is the one that we showed um, in the video, I think that is one of my favorites just because they only come out at like certain parts of the day. So if you see one, it's kind of special. Um, and then just the triggers are just funny. So they a lot of the fish um, do have personalities. So um, I can pick out certain animals and, you know, just enjoy how they interact with each other or with me when I'm diving in there with them. I don't know if we have any that are on like that endangered list. I would assume because coral reefs are endangered that they are probably listed um, under, oh, what's the step up from endangered? It's like, Oh, um, um, I can't it's like they're it. watching it or something like that. I can like see it in my mind, but um, to my knowledge, none of them are like extremely endangered. A lot of like the animals that are in Finding Nemo or uh, Finding Dory. So Dory, like the yellow tangs, clownfish, um, they did go through a brief moment after the movies came out when they were actually being um, like lost on the reefs because so many people were taking them off because people wanted them in their homes. So um, that's when people started really trying to breed them in facilities. Um, and so it's just kind of hard to say uh, like particular fish. So right now when I do feeds, it's just kind of, if you're there around midday or in the afternoon, you might be allowed to see it. Um, I don't necessarily come out and talk to the public. I know that um, when things do get back to normal, sorry. Um, I do know that when things do get back to normal, we want to start doing like how they used to do dive shows and um, the Oregon kelp forest tank. We're gonna just do them, start doing them in the Pacific. Um, I don't know when that's gonna start, hopefully um, someday soon, but not during the summer. Uh, I think the next thing of when we'll actually be doing shows in the exhibit might 
might be at Christmas time for um, reading with Santa, but that's like a big, big if. So we're just trying to keep safe right now and do what we can. So we do have two damselfish in there. Um, you might have seen them in Sea Punk with who are they in with? They might have been in with Banner. Um, if you guys remember Green Moray, you'll think they might have shared his tank. But um, they are black and white striped fish. We have a three stripe and a four stripe one. And damsels are extremely territorial. Uh, they haven't started attacking me yet, but if they, um, if I feel like if they were the same exact same species and they started to lay eggs and have a brood, they would most certainly be attacking me. Right now, the only fish that um, bother me during my dives are our um, lemon butterfly fish or the millet butterflies is another name for them. Um, they're not necessarily territorial, but they are very interested in what I'm doing and they will follow me around. And if I don't pay attention to them, they start picking at my hair, which is kind of annoying, <laughs> but. So I take care of the entire coastal waters room and that has um, like our coastal water pop-ups that have like the hagfish and the scallops. I have all of the jellyfish tanks so the moons and the sea nettles. And then I also have the Southern California kelp forest tank that has um, like our lobsters in it. Uh, the only tank in coastal waters I don't take care of is the cider crab tank. So that's just a lot of tanks to be diving. So <laughs> I pass that on to someone else. Um, we do have them all posted on, there's two um, different sides and you go into the exhibit. Um, they are posted on there and they're mostly accurate. I think there's only one animal that's on there that's no longer in the exhibit. Um, and I do believe eventually they want to move it to digital. So it'll be on like a rotating um, screen eventually, but we don't have like those identification cards that we hand out in our um, pod area, like for the sharks and stuff. I think every every day is different. You know, it's kind of hard uh, to picture me sitting at a desk, <laughs> kind of like right now. So um, having to, you know, knowing that there's an animal out there that relies on me and I get to take care of it and make sure it's having the best life possible. Um, knowing that when people come to the aquarium, they meet an animal that they've never met before and are inspired to hopefully save our oceans. I think that's a really special part of the job. So when the animals do need any sort of care, um, we do have a vet who comes uh, routinely every single week. And if I notice an animal that needs a little bit of extra help, um, I let our vet know. Um, I will say uh, a lot of these fish in this tank are very, very fast. It's not really like our rock fish and our other exhibits who are always like sitting and maybe we can sort of like catch them really quick. Um, if we're lucky, these guys are constantly moving, so it is a little bit more difficult when someone needs help uh, to get them out. But I do have um, a medical tank up on top of the exhibit so they can stay in the same water and we can provide them any sort of treatment they might need. 